Hey fam, welcome back, welcome back. Happy Saturday, happy Saturday. Before we start this video, I wanna know how everyone spent their Thanksgiving. Um, hopefully you guys got a chance to spend time with your loved ones, had a good meal and just enjoyed. So today is Saturday. Saturday is when we take the time out to do our news, comments, and reports. So hopefully there's something that you can take away from this video today and hopefully you just all enjoy. I love doing these Saturday videos because it takes time out. Um, I take the time out to hear what some of you guys got to say in the comments. Though it's random, we do pull some great comments as well. I like to share certain reports um, and certain news information on Saturdays most definitely. So you guys stay tuned. If you are new here, please go ahead and consider subscribing. If you like this kind of content and you can press the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload so you won't miss a video. Um, and if you've been here before, of course, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back. Hopefully you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving. We're going to go ahead and jump into this video, you guys. Don't forget to press the like button. Thank you to all of you who be in the comments reminding people to press the like button. Sometimes I do forget. Um, remember sometime throughout the video at some point, remember to check in with your state. Let us know how you're doing, how the shells are looking. Um, maybe some things that you decided to let go of buying because it got too expensive due to inflation. So let's jump into today's video. Thank you all for coming along. All right, so here is something to think about. Now, when we talk about the diesel shortage, um, some things that some people probably won't think about. So, Inspector Smalls have wrote, we're having problems with the trash pickup in the city. Those big garbage trucks run off of diesel. So, yes, you have a great point. Um, when it comes down to the trash pickup and the diesel prices are soaring, um, they don't want to send as much or as many trucks out as they probably used to to cut the cost. So that would limit how many trucks are going out to pick up trash. Maybe the trash schedule would be delayed and or some blocks. Y'all know what the blocks, you know, in our city like areas would be missed. I've had that happen only one time um, so far in the past month where trash was picked up but not every house was picked up it's like they were rushing for some reason um and, and, it, and it's just quite ridiculous so one thing to definitely think about if you live like in a city kind of, kind of area like me and um inspector smalls trash pickup will be a very big deal think about the infestations that will come the smells you know that would arise in your area and you know, it would be horrible. So think if you can invest in a metal tin can and you have a space to burn your trash, I would highly recommend it because if it came down to it, you would be responsible for taking care of your own trash. Any other ideas, of course, drop it down in the comments down below. Thank you, Inspector Smalls, for sharing that in the comments. All right, from Miss S, thank you for the ideas. You're more than welcome. So keeping dried fruit, nuts, and jerky can be a lifesaver when you cannot cook because you are sick or injured. I am thankful that I kept plenty. Yes, I highly, highly, highly recommend keeping some type of dried fruit, um, some type of jerky, nuts, and things like that in your stockpile because they are full of protein, vitamins from the nuts and stuff like that as well. Definitely, if you do not have these items, at least in your stockpile, consider putting those in your stockpile now. Thank you, Miss S, for sharing that in the comments. All right, from Sandy T Mobile. Hello from Oregon. News on your cannon jars. Please don't store them empty after cleaning them. Fill with water and place on a shelf. Any water is better than no water. Our town did a no water drinking, and I was ever happy to be of those who was doing what I do for emergencies. If power goes, I have water. If pipe freezes, I have water. No problem with storing them, being you have to store them anyway. At least fill it with water 
at least you will have water if anything happens, which actually makes sense. I've heard this a few times. So if you have like them empty cannon jars still in the container, clean those things and put some filtered water in there or just, you know, whatever it is that you have to do. Um, You can put filtered water, tap water, whatever, long as you have some type of water on hand. I will put the filtered water after cleaning them and store them. Um, but this is something that I have to do because I had to clean all my mason jars and I really need to fill them back up with some water. So definitely guys, if you got them empty mason jars laying around, fill them things with water. And when you're ready to use them, you can use them. And if anything happens in a way that you need water, at least you will have the water. Another great way to store some water on the side without taking up extra space. Thank you, Sandy T-Mobile, for sharing that in the comments. All right, next up is SLED. So SLED basically shared that it doesn't matter what you practically think. They never get straight to the answer. There's definitely going to be a strike. And all this political nonsense is straight up BS because they know exactly the plan and what they're going to do, basically. Um, and then Sled goes on to say, preppers are not to blame for the stores going empty. It's the stupid and ignorant people who have not prepared and they panic shop and grab whatever they can put their hands on. You know what? And it's true. And it's definitely true. Um, then Sled goes on to say, it's just like the media who's a bunch of liars. Um, and basically blaming the people that's prepping for the empty shelves. People that prep, prep over time. They don't go to the store and grab a cart full of this and that. They prep over time. To have a great stockpile, it takes a very long time. It's not done in one shopping trip. Panic buying causes, what does it cause? Empty shelves like it's nobody business. It causes fights in stores. Yes, it does. Um, You know, it, it, it's just chaotic to go out there and panic buy. That's why I try to encourage people to get things little by little along the way. Um, so it can decrease the chances of panic buying, especially in areas like mine. Like, like I live in a city. I live in a city and what's happening is people do, of course, wait to the last minute and they go pick up items when they say, oh, big storm ahead, you know, prepare to be indoors and blah, 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 blah. You don't want to be on the road when a storm happens. So everybody in the store the day before when they hear that breaking news and they taking things off the shelves, grabbing everything that they possibly can, like Sled said, um, can possibly get their hands on. And it's just ridiculous and chaotic in the stores when messages like that is put out. But if you grab things little by little, it will already be in your house and you won't have to worry about shopping with the panic buyers because it's definitely chaotic. I will always refer back to going, you know, back to when the pandemic started and how people was in the stores arguing over tissue, arguing over tissue. People, look, stock up. Avoid the chaotic nonsense if you can. And you know what? What I don't like about that, that lessens the chances of the elderly and the disabled to get supplies and things that they actually need. You know, some some people are limited of traveling to the stores. I definitely can say that. So when they do or when they're able, maybe someone is able to go and get them some stuff. A lot of stuff become unavailable and a lot of people grab certain things that they don't even need that the next person might need. But if you stock up now, you can be more prepared and more aware of the items that you should be stocking up on. Thank you, Sled, for sharing that in the comments. So next comment is coming from VF. People in the cities will starve. We was just touching on the city people. The stores in large city shelves will go bare in 24 hours or less if people panic buy. Yes. There's not enough wild game if every jerk is out shooting everything. People will starve in areas, beans and rice. It won't store indefinitely, but you can keep it six months. I have 25 pounds of rice and 30 pounds of beans. It may 
be a bland meal, but I'll eat. You know what, VF? You are completely right. People in the city are going to be hit, especially if they don't start stocking up now um, or if they haven't been stocking up because we've been hearing <clears throat> and hearing and hearing by January um, or maybe even by next week. Prices are going to jump, 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 jump. Um, rice. When it comes down to rice being stored indefinitely, rice can be stored for a very, very long time if you store it correctly. Dry beans can store for a very, very, very long time if you store it correctly. Um, having 30 pounds for a single person is definitely enough to get you by. I'm really not sure for how long, but it depends on, you know, how much you definitely um, eat, you know, you don't, when it comes down to it, you don't eat for desire. You eat to stay alive. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't really eat to get full. You just have enough to basically stay alive every single day. Um, sometimes you'll probably just have to skip a day when it comes down to what a day or two, um, when crap really hits the fan to preserve food and it, it is what it is, but definitely people in the city, my city people, if you're out here and you're listening to this video and you're not stocking up, I highly urge you to get out there, at least get your rice, at least get your flour, at least get your uh, dry beans, at least get your canned goods, canned soup, already, you know, shelf stable kind of meals, stuff like that. Definitely, you know, get out there, do what you can do, because trust me, you're not going to want to be out here when all of this stuff go down. You're not. Trust me. Thank you, VF, for sharing that in the comments. You guys, I can already tell you there will be a part two to this video because there are so many great comments. I have not had the time lately in a while to get back to all the comments. But now as I'm filtering through these comments, you guys got some great comments. And I want to be able to share more um, of you guys' comments on screen because it is some great information that other people should be hearing. Um, so definitely it would be a part two to this video. It probably won't be on this Saturday, but maybe Sunday or sometime throughout the week. So make sure your notification bells are on so you are notified and don't miss this part two. Um, from Junior Mustang, because we're running out of time and <clears throat> I still got some comments to go, believe it or not. So from Junior Mustang, this all started when an engineer wanted a day off to attend his wife's funeral and he was denied. So this is referring to the strike, you know, the whole diesel shortage situation. Everyone deserves five sick days per year, plus they drive cross country. So when he delivers, he gets two days off and it took him five days to deliver. But now he is across the country and has to pay for the hotel in the two days, then deliver the train back home, then two days off. So he only sees his family two days every two weeks. That's not fair. I think they will strike because they have been trying to get days. They don't even get sick days. I don't know anyone who will work like that. Family is first. You know what, Junior Mustang? I definitely agree with you. And for the time that they put in and the importance of their roles when it comes down to helping the country, you know, it's ridiculous that they can't even get a set amount of sick days off. And for them to have to even pay, it took it's supposed to take a two-day trip. So I guess they're supposed they're set on how many days it should take to deliver, right? So this person was delivering a train. Um so it was only supposed to take two, but he wound up taking five. Um the, this comment says. And he's only got paid for the two days regardless. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Junior Mustang, I want to thank you for sharing that in the comments. Hold up. And then get denied the time to go to his wife's um funeral? Come on. I'm going to leave that right there. So we hear that Albertsons and Kroger is supposed to be merging together. So this person says, I'm hearing, that mer I'm hearing a merger of Kroger and Albertsons. Safeway and three others will be under them. They want to compete with Walmart and Amazon in low prices, but we'll see. Some people are saying that the prices would go up once um, Albertsons and Kroger actually do merge. Um, while this person is saying that she's hearing 
um, the prices are supposed to actually be competing with Walmart, Amazon, and other lower prices. But like this person said, we'll go ahead and see. For those of you who do have the Kroger and Albertsons in your areas, definitely, um, once it does happen, let us know what the prices are like. Be careful with the prices of food on Amazon. If you shop for little bulk foods on Amazon, compare them prices first. Look at this. So somebody has shared a 12-pack of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Look how much they were charging. $42.99. Now they went on to share that Walmart has the same ones for $1.54 per can and you can get 12 for $18 and 48 cent so y'all don't be out here getting scammed by these people that's going out there racking up on this food and reselling it for a higher price online especially places like Amazon <laughs> all right fam so we are running out of time if I can stay here all day with you guys <clears throat> and share all of this stuff with you guys I definitely would so wait for that part two. The part two definitely would be coming out as well because I'm looking at my list and it's so much more to share. So you guys, I want to thank you all for coming along. Remember sharing in the comments. If I don't get back to you in the comments, eventually I would. Don't, don't think I'm just ignoring you guys. I'm totally not. It's just that time have not been on my side lately. So guys, stay prepared. Stay stocking up. Don't let anyone discourage you from stocking up and say, hey, you're doing this for nothing. Trust me, you're doing this for something. So I want to make sure you all are out there staying prepped. Yes. Staying blessed. Yes. And most of all, staying safe. Please stay safe. It is the holiday season. I cannot stress it. People are out there and people are bugging and mugging people. Y'all heard about the Walmart shooting? Now, that was crazy. We're going to cover that in a quick video as well, too, today. We're going to go ahead and look that up, too. Um, And that's pretty much it. This is Shauna, and now I'm checking out for moments with us. So, make sure you all stay beautiful, queens and kings. Until next time, I'm out.